What is up everybody? Scott Brio back with another video. Today is gonna be on the Yamaha Mod X. I gotta admit, the Mod X threw me for a real loop. Honestly, I did practically zero research about this thing before I brought it home to check it out and uh, review it. My initial reaction to it wasn't all that good. I poked around and found the user interface and functions initially seemed very, very overly complicated and uh, struck me as sort of a keyboard that a touring jazz lounge player might travel with. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's just that it is not what tickles my fancy and gets me excited. I'm more of a programmable synthesizer, sampler, and drum machine kind of guy. It wasn't until I got really frustrated with it and opened up YouTube and watched the Cuckoo video on synthesis with the Mod X that everything changed for me. I'll link that that video in the description below. After watching his video, I kind of realized this thing is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's capable of a lot of very in-depth and powerful synthesis, and it also sounds fantastic. You know, a lot of the sounds in there have this very high-end sheen and polish that uh, Yamaha synths have kind of become famous for, right? Like the signature Yamaha sound that you'd hear on the DX7, uh, the Integra 7, etc. Technically, it is just a sample player, not a true sampler that will record into it like the MPC or an ASR10 or the S2400, but it goes much further than many keyboard workstations I have tried before. I've had a lot of gear that are just sample players like the Korg Volca sample and uh, the Roland TR-8S, and these are fine. Loading sounds into them is fun and you can get creative, but ultimately it's a little bit limited. One thing I did notice about the Mod X is loading sounds can be a bit slow and cumbersome. The implementation of transferring wave files into the Mod X is actually super easy and the synthesis engine is so powerful that to me it really makes up for not having an actual sample recording feature. And I don't say that lightly. I previously have very much disliked sample player keyboards and workstations because I am such a uh, fanatic of hardware samplers and so it's needless to say that I was surprised by the Mod X's synthesis capabilities. It is, in my opinion, truly a sample-based synthesis workstation and performance machine. You can get some really surprising results out of it. So who is the Mod X for? Well, I already gave you my initial thoughts, but after learning more about it, I realized that it's a very powerful tool, both in the studio as well as on stage. It's powerful enough to create some wicked sounding patches for your songs, as well as take those sounds on the road with you and have performance parameters easily at your fingertips. You know, having the super knob here and your four synth parameter knobs and then the faders, uh, it's really pretty great. You can do a lot with just these small amount of controls. In this video, I'm not gonna cover all of the features or show you how exactly to make your own patches. Both Cuckoo and Loopop have in-depth videos of that and they're fantastic. Definitely check those out too. Instead, I'm more of a studio guy and I can't play keys all that well. So I will be using the Mod X the way that I usually use my gear, which is creating patches, controlling with various sequencers, recording that into Ableton, and then using those bits to make and build up a song, or at least a song starter. I'm not gonna make a song from start to finish, but uh, enough so that you can hear how it sounds actually being used to create music. That way, hopefully you will be able to decide if this is something that you would like to own in your own studio or take with you on the road. Now, it's important to note, the Mod X doesn't really have a save function, which I found interesting. Everything you load into it automatically saves into memory. So all the sounds you make for your songs, you can also take with you, which is pretty cool. It's also nice to not have to remember to constantly hit save. Whatever you put in there is just there, and that's kind of nice. But before we get started, I want to shout out World of Stereo in San Francisco. I borrowed this Mod X from them, and they've got a ton of music, audio, DJ stuff. They've got mixers, CDJs, controllers, turntables, microphones, headphones, light speakers. It is the place to go for music gear. They've got a website, which I will put uh, maybe over here, over here, I don't know. I'll put it somewhere. There will be a link in the description below. So if you wanna help support them and this channel, check out some of their gear and uh, order your next piece of gear from them. And uh, don't forget to let them know that I sent you. Also, I wanted to remind you about Dance Diamond Mastering. It's my mixing and mastering service. You can send me your finished mix and I will give it the commercial loudness, vibe, and polish that we've all come to expect with electronic music these days. I've got sound examples on my website, which is somewhere around here and I will link it in the description uh, below as well. I also have competitive prices and lots of happy customers. If you'd like to check it out and send me your song and get started, uh, click the link below or email me at mastering at scottbrio.com. 
All right, so I have just a initialized patch brought up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and uh, just start making sounds. I'm gonna pull up maybe a bass sound from uh, one of the sample packs that I've got, see if I can uh, kind of turn it into something. And then of course, feed that into Ableton and start building a song. Uh, so let's see here. We've got our dance music pack, we've got a bass sound, load that up, okay. Nice, uh, let's turn that reverb send down. Nice. So uh, what can we do to make this a little bit more interesting? Let's go into edit here, go to common, go to part one. So there is our bass sound. And let's go to element two and let's add another waveform and see what we can find here. The page over, uh, just kind of randomly. Now, this is something that I am not super excited about with the Mod X is, you know, it does label uh, all of your, your folders and you can browse through the folder uh, file structure but it's kind of slow and it takes a while to, to load up. And that might just be because I have too many folders within folders or something like that. But, um, you know, nonetheless, it, uh, it's a bit slow at times. Maybe layer it with another base here. Nice. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Uh, let's bring the volume of that down just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I uh, wanted to add a little bit of that like top end fizzle on the second one and onto the first one. Uh, let's see if we can add a third element and see what that does. New waveform. So at this point, this will be our third base layer. So we're really kind of like, you know, layering sounds so that we can create something more complex and more unique. Random pan. Uh, it sounds cool, but maybe not for a bass sound. We don't really want the, the bass panning around. Uh, maybe just a little bit. That way it'll kind of it'll kind of jump like this, or maybe around the other two bass sounds. Yeah, it sounds good. Let's go into our amplitude. Oh, we're already in there. Uh, let's see. I want to adjust the amp uh, ADSR. and decay two, release. Go into element EQ. Bump up the bass there on the uh, EQ low gain. So you turn down. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna accentuate the bass, take off some of the highs, filter, cut off. Yeah, I like that. All right. Uh, so now we got our bass sound. Uh, let's swing over here to Ableton. Um, all right, so let's get some drum sounds going here. I'm not gonna use the Mod X drums just yet. Um, I probably will use some to layer, but um, you know, the Mod X doesn't do the greatest electronic music drums. There's lots of drum kits in there. Uh, they're a little bit more typical kind of uh, rock kits and that sort of thing. Their electronic drum section is a bit limited. So uh, we're gonna do a, a drum sequencer here. That's not bad. Take off a little bit of the high on that kick. Yeah. 
All right, uh, let's go ahead and drop in some notes here. All right, and uh, let's see, uh, that, hat, that hat's not that bad. All right, uh, I'm gonna do a little trick here. All right, dial in the release and the hold. And uh, let's bring up uh, LFO. Nice, all right. So we got a little drum pattern going there. Insert a uh, MIDI clip here for the Mod X. All right, let's get that looping. Give a little bit of swing here. And we're gonna set this up to uh, control the Mod X. All right, and uh, now that we've got the quad note generator running, we can uh, we could just flip through the different sounds on the Mod X and see what uh, what we can find that we like. There we go, got some funk out of it. Nice. All right. So let's uh, let's just stretch this one out. Um, and we've got remember those strange kind of wonky filter resonances going on here. Nice. Okay. So uh, let's add in some of. I'm just gonna record. Let's make this actually 32. Record in some of those quad note uh, sounds. What uh, that is uh, dust to gold is the preset on that. So let's try that out. It's in one of their the dance sections of the uh, the Mod X. Nice, uh, that, that turned out pretty cool. We got, uh, let's see, it's a little quiet. So let's bump up the gain there. Um, of course, we're gonna wanna mute quad note generator. So, oh, I've already got that turned off, all right. Uh, so this is what we've got here. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty stoked on that. It's uh, it's pretty groovy. 
And you know, the more that we add to it, the better it's gonna get, right? So we can do some uh, side chain compression on that and uh, some more effects. But we already recorded in, you know, as you can see, as that quad note generator was, was uh, controlling the Mod X, I was able to play with the uh, envelope release and the reverb amount at the same time. And by doing that, you can make these kind of like micro swells and then not micro, you can make these big swells like I did towards the end there. And uh, you can create some really cool uh, stuff that's already baked in, right? I mean, you know, of course you can try to write all this stuff in with uh, automation and stuff, but the beauty of having hardware for me, like the Mod X, is you have the stuff that is permanently mapped to the knobs. It's not, you know, unlike a MIDI controller or something where you have to go in and you have to map everything and you gotta make sure that it, it, it's working and all that. It just works on uh, a keyboard workstation like the Mod X. So this is pretty powerful, you know? Uh, I'm really digging what we're creating so far. Uh, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we can add here. And for this one, let's uh, let's make a new one. Let's uh, let's go home. Hit the home button. Come on. There we go. Make a new one. Oh, actually, I want to go home and I want to turn this one. I'm just going to mute them right from here. Whole thing. Just keep it easy. And this one, we're going to make going to make a new sound in it. There we go. Uh, the AWM2, which is the sample based element one. There we go. Oscillator tune, new waveform. Uh, we've already got a bass, we have a lead. So let's go in here to let's find some keys and pads, maybe. Clav C2. Nice, just a quick little lick there. Uh, so now we can add uh, our RC20. Just kind of warm it up. And uh, let's uh, do a delay here. Let's try some strings. Let's just put these strings uh, kind of towards the end here. All right, so that's a cool little uh, little riff there out of the strings, but let's add some effects. All right, uh, go into effect here under common. Insert A, what do we want to add? Let's pause that for now. Not an EQ, a phaser maybe. Yeah, I like that. Cool, let's hear how that sounds in the mix. All right, uh, and let's record that in. Let's go over here, back to Ableton, create another audio track. Cool, and let's do like an effect swell on this too, maybe. Some delay. Let's do a dub delay, lo-fi dub delay. How does that sound? Yeah. 
And maybe a reverb as well too. Sure, let's try it. Do a nice, uh, very large, do cathedral. Maybe not eternity, that's a bit aggressive. And let's add some hats to this and just see what that sounds like. We want drums here. So let's find drums perk. There we go. Percussion. How about that? Yeah, it's nice having uh, having everything broken down. <laughs> a little too weird for me. Oh, let's try a wacko kit. That's cool too, uh, ish, but let's do, you know what? I just want like a hi-hat. I just want some hi-hats. In that case, we're going to sample, we're going to take a sample uh, or load up a sample. Okay. So we've got some effects on it. Back to Reason again, my favorite. Um, let's do a player device and we will do, oh no, sorry. Oh yeah, player device and beat map. Beat map's a good one. Now that we've got that and record that in and I'm going to make some changes with this just so it changes things up. You'll see. By clicking around, you can change the, uh, the pattern of the hi-hats. So let's record that in. Going to uh, dance mega synth. What does it sound like? Let's add another element here. Do another bass patch. Just kind of layer them up. Nice. I like that. So we got three different bass parts uh, going on there. And there's all at full volume, but I think it sounds pretty good. Let's go to common and uh, see if we can add effect to kind of glue these together a little bit. Yeah, amp effect, amp simulator. Uh, let's dial the dry wet back uh, a lot. like a light reverb. Gated. A 
That sounds pretty good. Let's see. Let's uh, just layer that with some hats or something, like a drum loop. And again, I'm just kind of throwing things together. I'm not gonna really make anything super original from scratch just because we don't really have the time. But um, I did wanna show you how uh, some sounds that you make with the Mod X uh, mixed in with the DAW can really sound pretty good. So we got the uh, percussion loop here. Don't really like where this is hitting. So let's change this. Okay, and let's add our second part. All right, so I found a uh, nice little bass riff here. So I'm gonna use a Reason device. Nice, let's record that, that's cool. <laughs> that's crazy, I like it. But let's uh, maybe just add one more thing and keep this going. See, that's cool. There's, uh, you can hear those little like bass, like little tick sounds, like they're almost slapping the body of the, the bass guitar or something. Um, I mean, that's like, that's, <laughs> that's stuff you wouldn't get just from a, a VST really. So that's some drums. I mean, drums might be good. Open up Reason, cause I love Reason. Drum sequencer. Oomph, there we go. Nice, that sounds good. Um, all right, and let's add some effects. 
Uh, let's try maybe a uh, distortion. Hey, that sounds good. That's wild. Woo! <laughs> that's crazy. All right, that's pretty rad. I like it. Uh, that's just three samples layered and kind of, you know, mixed together with some effects. Uh, so not too bad. Go back over here to Ableton and uh, let's just write something in. Let's see, is there a filter for the whole common? Now let's just do the EQ. Let's EQ a little bit of the highs out and boost a little bit of the lows. Nice, that's filthy. <laughs> uh, all right, drum sequencer and... <clears throat> Let's do this one. Uh, let's do UMPF uh, retro beats, just because these are a little bit grimier, and we have a pretty grimy sound here. Keyboard's a little loud. And uh, let's just record this to audio. I think if we had more time, I would keep uh, the Mod X parts uh, as uh, MIDI, but uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, gotta keep things moving along. Oh, change the input. Four bars. There we go. Nice. We got a little loop there. Turn this off. And we can uh, just duplicate that. And that's pretty filthy. <laughs> that's pretty filthy. Uh, let's see. Let's add, let's get rid of these. Add another Mod X channel here. And let's load up a new sound. Element one, oscillator tune, new waveform. All right, let's see what we can find. Uh, like maybe synth wise. And these are all samples that I'm loading up by the way. <laughs> eh, maybe not that one. Synth one shots. Nice. Just the level, turn that down. I like it. Add another waveform, layer that up, turn it on. Nice. I want that to ring out though. So let's, uh, let's go to the amp envelope and select release.
adjust the decay a little bit. Delay. Yeah, I like delay. Yeah, that's it. Turn that uh, dry wet down. It's off. Nice, I like that. Let's save that. Store, store as new performance. And we'll name this uh, Vengeance Bells. Because <laughs> that's where it came from. Actually, I don't think it was Vengeance, but whatever. All right, and let's see how, let's hear how that lines up with what we've got in Ableton. Um, and I think, uh, let's try maybe another instance of quad note generator, because I'm a huge fan of it. <laughs> I like that. That is uh, pretty dope. Nice. <laughs> All right, so that was dope. We took some sounds from the Mod X, the bass sound. Uh, we synthesized another bass sound uh, that was a little bit more sporadic. And then we threw in some hi-hats and some reason drums. And overall, I think it sounded pretty good, you know? Um, I'm gonna do maybe another video with uh, additional kind of just making sounds. Uh, but for now, you know, you're able to hear how the Mod X is incorporated into like a song starter. So uh, ultimately, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the Mod X. I'm not a huge fan of the look of the touchscreen, uh, nor the overall design of it at all, really. It looks sort of like a cheap and plasticky keyboard. It's a bit gimmicky for my taste, especially with the big flashing super knob. While the Mod X does have thousands of slightly cheesy stock presets, most of them aren't too different from my Integra 7 which has basically, you know, a lot of the same sounds. Uh, it's got some different ones as well, but they share a lot of sounds. A lot of the Yamaha PCM sounds. And I've used many of them in songs by polishing them up with effects and they sounded pretty great. The pianos, clavs, the organs and stuff, they all sound perfectly fine for live performance. They're just a little bit simple for modern electronic music. The real power comes into using them and the FM engine to layer with your own samples. It does have a lot of menu diving, but the screen is large and responds to touch, so it's not too bad. Having the synthesis parameters dedicated to each of these knobs and faders uh, makes things very easy to tweak from kind of sterile and safe to like, you know, wild and, and weird. You can do that pretty quickly, so you can get creative. A few negatives about the Mod X are that uh, the user interface is a bit slow and laggy at times. I threw a large sample pack or two onto the USB stick and it takes a couple of seconds to read any given sound, uh, like, you know, five or 10 seconds and often 20 to 30 seconds to read an entire folder of sound. The touchscreen is what you'd expect from like a Motif workstation from 2002. By today's standards, it really should have a touchscreen like the MPC Live or the MPC X have. It just feels really, really outdated. On the other hand, while it is a bit expensive, the amount of functionality, synthesis power, and performance capability you're getting out of one workstation, I'd say it's definitely a great purchase. I'd go as far to say like the Mod X is a decent desert island piece of gear. That is, if you only had two or three pieces of gear to have with you while you're on a deserted island, after choosing your DAW, the Mod X would be a fantastic choice, simply because it's so flexible. You've got literally thousands upon thousands of drum kits that are realistic enough, you know, realistic sounding instruments, sample playback with USB loading of sounds, and tons of synthesis capabilities. It's a bit complex to even, you know, get through in a, a video, really. And it's definitely overwhelming at first. But if you can't make something with the Mod X, you're not trying hard enough. 
within minutes of loading in my own sounds to it, I had created some pretty crazy bass sounds that I don't think we would have made on anything else. The layering functionality with, uh, you know, EQ and effects, while just kind of basic in practice, it really allows you to create some really unique stuff. Adjust the ADR envelope, slap some effects on there, and trigger it with an arpeggiator, and you've got a real powerhouse of a keyboard synthesizer. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of the Mod X and what you like best about it. Also, don't forget to check out World of Stereo online or in person if you're in the San Francisco area. They are the place to go for music and DJ gear. They've got an absolute ton of mixers, synths, drum machines, lights, speakers, all that good stuff. And don't forget to tell them I sent you. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Scott Brio, and I will see you on the next one. Peace out.